Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for the new screensavers is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. The new screensavers is brought to you by Audible.com. To download the free audiobook of your choice, go to Audible.com slash NSS. And by Squarespace. Squarespace is the simplest way to create a beautiful website or cover page for your portfolio, your business, your online store. Enter the offer code NSS and get 10% off. A 360-degree view, a look through the Oculus Rift, and it's alive. Leo flips the switch to the ultimate virtual reality gaming machine. Live from the Twit Brick House in downtown Petaluma, it's the new Screensavers. Great show up and hey, how you doing? Welcome to the screensavers. It's good to be here. I feel Alex like I was Lindsay, just here. Leo Laporte, have, you were here for Mac Break Weekly, <laughs> but have you ever done this show? Once before. Okay. I think we actually started drinking because that's what I do. That's right. And many years ago, you were on the screensavers all the time. Yep, absolutely. This is episode 47. I can't believe we're coming up on our one year like, oh, anniversary I'm back. for Saturday, April 2nd, 2016. Did you get bit by any uh, April Fool's jokes? I didn't get bit. I, I just kept on telling myself, I was walking around just going, it's April 1st, it's April 1st, it's April 1st. So every time everybody said anything to me, they were like, would you like lunch? I'm like, no. April 1st like, is the, the only, it's the only day of the year where people actually think they can, they, there's no, that there's things you can't believe on the internet. <laughs> you don't believe anything on the internet. It's but just the one day of the year because where everything you go, I was on the internet, I don't believe it. Because everything else before and after it's April true. 1st is true. It's absolutely true. Yeah. You know who got bit? Google. Yeah. With their stupid mic drop thing. Did you see that? So they modified G. I didn't see it because it, they pulled it before it even got to the West Coast. They launched <laughs> it April Fool's Day on the East Coast, and so many people complained. They changed Gmail. So, you know, normally you have a send and a send and archive button. You have two buttons on your Gmail. And they replaced the send and archive button with, a, with what it was just an icon, which turned out to be send and mic drop. You know, where you go like this, you, like, you, you lay it down, and you, you're so good, nobody else is like, boom. So... What would happen if you, and apparently a lot of people have muscle memory, after send, they press send and archive instead of send. So they were pressing send and mic drop for business mails and stuff. It would insert a Minions animated gift of a Minion going mic drop, and then apparently it would block all replies. Because <laughs> <laughs> you did a mic drop. There's nothing more to be said. <laughs> sure, it seemed funny, but... It look. seemed funny. Seemed like a good idea until people use it for their business. As soon mail as you take it serious. As soon as you take like, your, your mail oh, serious. Oh, crap. I don't take my mail. So it was launched when we were asleep, and we didn't even... They pulled it before we even got it. <laughs> so only people on the East Coast got bit by that April Fool's joke. That's dopey. Uh, coming up, we, this is a major day. This is our VR day. The Oculus Rift is here. It actually came a little sooner than we thought. So we're, we rushed ahead and finished the ultimate virtual reality game machine so we can install the Oculus Rift today. There it is. And I'll just, we have a video of me doing, doing the final screws and the, you know, and believe me, while the video goes fast, it took me like three days to get this thing exactly right. It didn't come on the first time. Always when you build a PC, that's, you hope it'll start when you push the on button. Turned out it was a minor thing. There are two power connectors for the CPU from the power supply, not for the motherboard, not just one, and we only plugged in one. No problem. Found the second one. Carson caught that, right? Because you'd done that. So you, and then it booted. I'm jumping up and down. And then, oh, it was a long tail. I hadn't really mounted the SSD properly in right. there. It was screwed in, but it wasn't apparently making the electric connection. And everybody said, no, 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 I'm sure it's fine. I'm sure. And finally, that wasn't. That was it. So we went back. We screwed that in. Uh, and then there was a few BIO settings. Uh, Ryan Schrat helped a lot. We'll talk to him in a second. But it's running. It's running great. It's perfect. Everything's working perfectly. So we're ready to install the Oculus Rift. We'll do that a little bit later on. Uh, we're going to be joined not only by Ryan Schrat, by Peter Rubin, who's a VR expert from Wired. He's going to help us uh, talk about how Oculus actually did this from day one. And now, it's one thing to consume VR, but you have brought some stuff to make 
immersive video. Kind of, I kind of brought both ends, the, the, the easy end and the Are the, we the recording end. now? With We're the... not recording now. We're just going to record some segments okay. that we'll put up later. So we have brought from Nokia, this is the Ozo, O-Z-O camera. How much is that? Uh, it is, the retail is sixty grand. Sixty thousand dollars? Yes, we like to. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, but it's um. <laughs> but it's, it's recording when it records everything that happens in a, a all around in a sphere. Exactly. And is the audio also uh, yes. spherical? Yes. So that's the key. It is the key, and yeah. and it's there's eight eight mics on it, and so it's able to get gather nice. a lot of uh, a lot of uh, the sound, and that's actually one of the most impressive parts of it. Here's one of the least impressive parts. We used it on Tuesday on Mac Break Weekly. Is that video done yet? Celery and carrots <laughs> is just the base of a soup. <laughs> no, we, we just, we, we, you told me four hours per minute of video and rendering time alone. Well, and then what happened was we got there and we realized when we got home, we didn't have enough hard drive space. So then we had to order some more hard drive. You had to buy more hard drives so to do this. The, file, the files that come off of this aren't, aren't very big, but when, but we wanted to get the highest quality. So we wanted to convert them to what's called DPX frames instead of wow. JPEG. And because we did that, we ended up with so eight of those. And, Alex um, doesn't do anything. Right. And, and so, so, you second know, rate. so we're working on it. That's um, good. Now we'll play with it today. This we should awesome. have it by uh, the next Mac break. And Alex has a less expensive 360-degree yes. camera. We should show you as well. Uh, but first, let's talk about the news. We mentioned April Fools. Um, you know what? I have a feeling there were fewer April Fools jokes this time around. People like kind of got like I didn't see a lot of weird stuff. I was waiting. My mom. It's like a. It's, it is like her favorite day Alex, of the year. Alex, I it's heard. Just, I think she works on it for months. I was. I. I, I, oh, I still she, haven't heard the she stories. She pranks you. She pranks one of us usually every year. <sighs> And it's usually well like thought what? out, well planned. Oh, you know, it'll be someone's taking away the house, or she wrecked the car, or she. <laughs> and she, but she, but you got to get. She thinks through the whole story. So you know, there's like it. a, there's like exactly all the little details, and she, you know, all the run on that you're used to hearing is is all tied into the, into the joke. Um, but I wasn't a victim this year. Our friend Johnny Jet, who does the uh, travel bit on our uh, radio show, and he's been on this show many times, posted this image on his uh, Facebook feed. Can you, can you see that? How many babies are in there? It looks like three. <laughs> and, uh, every, and, we, and Lisa comes running in and says, they're having triplets. <laughs> they're having, apparently Johnny is also like your mom, does this every year. He Planned is, it out. He is brothers and sisters. Uh, he is having, he and Natalie are having a baby. Right, but, but not just, three. Just one of them. <laughs> one at a time. It's always the They're best. having a baby, and they have Photoshop. Uh, the Department of Justice also said, April Fool's to Apple. We've decrypted the phone. Never mind. We're sorry we bothered you. Just pay no attention. Go back to whatever you were doing. But, of course, it was only for that case, right? Just the San Bernardino well, case. Well, now, apparently, they've agreed to unlock the uh, iPhone and iPod in the Arkansas homicide case. All right. They've got a technique. For the only case. I just saw now the Celebrate, the Israeli company that was rumored to be helping them, and then everybody said no, is not. Apparently, was involved in this, and maybe they've got a technique because others are going to use. I'm Apple. waiting for the press release that says Apple has purchased the Israeli company. Apple's <laughs> actually thinking about suing the government because they, I think, reasonably so, say, well, if there's a flaw, we need to know that. Right. I think you just purchase the Israeli company. Just purchase Celebrate. It's hundred. They got the money. Give them a hundred million dollars. Call today. Give them a on. billion. Yeah. Why be cheap at this point? Exactly. Um, understandably, the Apple wants to know if there's a security flaw, not so much to shut down the FBI, but they just say, well, if there's a security flaw and it gets out, others will be yep. vulnerable. We would like to know so we can fix the security flaw. The FBI hasn't decided yet whether they're going to hand it over to Apple. But if I'm the FBI, I'm thinking, no, no, hell no. I, got, I have to admit, I wouldn't I get any phone I want. After Apple told me they're not going to help me, I, I don't think I would ha necessarily right. hand that back to them. Right. Kind of, and and I, don't, you know, I, I didn't think Apple should hand it over to them, but I also don't think the FBI has to hand it over. But I do think Apple should just buy the Israeli company because they probably have, if they figured it's it out, they've probably got some smart people. They're they good, said they could security. crack iOS 8. Uh, they right. haven't said anything about nine, but yeah, absolutely. Those are the people you want uh, them working in, for you. Yeah, getting them into the club. Yeah, uh, it's owned by a big Japanese firm that has some money. So buy them so. too. Okay. Yeah. You know, it's not uh, two hundred billion. They in the bank. They, they, they can offer them. I mean, I, 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 it, it's probably a big Japanese company, but I bet you it's worth less than a billion dollars. <laughs> You you're, know, probably, you're probably just right. saying. Uh, also, uh, we were at Build yesterday. Mike, uh, Mike, Paul Thorat and Mary Jo Foley mm -hmm. uh, did Windows Weekly from the uh, big Microsoft Developers Conference. Paul was gruntled. He was a little gruntled. In fact, if you see pictures of Paul, he was very gruntled because Microsoft, yeah, well, he's wearing a funny hat. He wasn't gruntled at that moment. Nah, I don't know if gruntled or drunk, but... Uh, 
the reason they're all wearing Tux the Penguin hats, which they purchased from a vendor right out front of Moscone, is that Microsoft announced that uh, coming soon to Windows 10 near you, you're going to be able to go to the App Store and buy the Bash shell, buy a, not Linux, we should be clear, but Ubuntu ha is going to make all of their command line program, all the free software foundation, I, Rod, Richard Stallman is going to be pissed off, all, <laughs> the, all the GNU stuff, everything without additional compilation will run on Windows 10, uh, including the Bash shell, but presumably that means other shells as well. So you'll now have a command, a, like a real command line, and set and awk and grep and Emacs and Vi and all and it of does, the things. Is it at the same low level that we would expect the shell so, to be? So here's at? what it's doing. It's very interesting. Uh, it's not, and the reason you don't want to say they've got Linux on there is right. it's not Linux. Linux is an operating system, and you don't. So you you you, you don't want to run Windows and uh, and Linux. That would be virtualization. What they're doing, you know, what Wine is on Linux. Yep. So Wine, they, Wine stands for Wine is not an emulator. What Wine does is it lets you run Windows programs natively on on Linux by intercepting the Windows API calls and translating them into the appropriate language for, for Linux. It doesn't work for every program, but it works well enough you can run, say, Microsoft Word on mm -hmm. Linux, not in virtualization, not in not a VM, but just standalone like it's running, like it's working under Wine. So this is reverse Wine. And they've made it so that you can run almost all. I talked to some Microsoft people uh, who are using it, by the way, at, at, at in the Redmond campus yesterday. Um, and they said it runs almost everything. There's a few things that don't run. Nothing graphical will run. Right. But every command line, without recompilation, it just, you download it from, it runs apt-get. So you can apt, say apt-get install Emacs dash N-O-X, and, and, and it runs. Now you've got Emacs. I was Pretty say, awesome. In my world, reverse wine is coffee. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Microsoft should call it. Yeah. Why coffee? Or well, Java. It's oh, wait, wine. no, no, never mind. Sorry. <laughs> Not Java, no. <laughs> I'm enough trouble with Oracle as it is. Did you get in line and order a Tesla? I wanted to. I was busy. 200, what was it, 252,000? What's the. Once the first... I realized I was 115,000 in the hole, I was like, uh, just wait. So, so they're building roughly 50,000 Model S's a year. They've taken orders for five times that number for the Model 3, their new one, because it's 35, starts at $35,000. It's the first affordable Tesla. It, that means if you ordered it today, it, Elon was saying, we're not going to start shipping until 2018. That means 2023, you'll get your car. 2023. I, I was thinking about it, that I, I really could have almost had Malachi, my son, that could be his first car. Put $1,000 down, and then it'd be, Perfect. when he's 16, he could, he could he, it would just roll right off. I could. I didn't get in fast enough, and I I, I hesitate to order it now because now presume now what it does. This is actually really interesting because Elon has played a very long game on this and a very gutsy game. He's famous for the, doing this. You know, he made his money in PayPal. Actually, I think it was a company even before PayPal, and each time invested almost everything he'd made into the next thing. Right. He did. He does not take some off the table. Say, well, I'm going to keep a little for myself. Right. It's like, no, I'm all in on SpaceX. I'm all in. So. Tesla, I think, was kind of a very gutsy move. First, he took the Lotus body and he put an electric engine in that, sold enough of those to build the design from the ground up Model S, took the money from that, put that into the Model X, which I'm still waiting for. A lot of people are. There <laughs> haven't been many of those coming out of the factory. Bought the Numi factory in Toyota, which uh, Toyota used to make, uh, what was that crazy car they used to make down there? And it, that, that factory is a very nice factory, which they're barely using. I mean, there's a lot more capacity there. But uh, Jason Calacanis, who's friends with Elon, told me, really, the whole game for Elon is the affordable. He wants to change the world. He's not right. trying to make a buck. He wants to change the world. The whole thing is an affordable, uh, emission-free electric vehicle with a usable range and an affordable price so that people will actually buy it. And I think it was such a gutsy thing. And I can only imagine that on March 29th, Elon is like chewing his nails going god i hope this works because if it if they don't if this doesn't work they're out of money i think they, they got, <laughs> no i seriously i don't think they have a company i think he went right to the edge and you know what it worked There's and a, it, at this point you can go to the market and say hey i got 252,000 orders give me 20 billion dollars let's build a car because he's now proven he's a car car company he can he's got orders there there's a uh there's a great uh, hangout, actually, between he, he and, and Richard Branson. Mm. And he talks about some of those moments where, well, we're running a couple things, and money got pretty close. And, and, he, and he says it kind of slowly, and you realize, yeah. He I was think it got real close Real close, you know, and, you know and, and so it's... Yeah. 
but that was a while ago. He, but the good news is he turned the corner. I know there were people shorting uh, Tesla waiting for this day. I mean, he had 115,000 people sign up before they even knew what the car I looked know. like. I mean, that's well done. Tesla so has not well ever made any money. They've been losing money like crazy. The Model Just X, like the Model S, the Roadster. Yeah, it's like Amazon. Well, Amazon could make money. Yeah. I think Tesla's really, this was all to, leading to this day. Right. And now they go to, you know, the equity markets and, the, and, the, and, the, and say, hey, okay, we got orders. Now we need $50 billion to build a factory. <laughs> <laughs> There's that. <laughs> uh, and I, you know what? Elon will do it. Did we have that Scoble video? Yes. He got in line. Where did he get in line? At, at uh, the Fremont factory? Oh, in Dublin. Okay. I talked to somebody who waited three hours in line. A friend of mine went down to Corte Madeira. That's our nearest Tesla store. Got there at 6 a.m., 6.30 a.m., had a car ordered by 10.30. That's what you had to do. There's the big supercharger. Um, amazing. Amazing. It's, this is big. But the funny thing is, I mean, these people are putting $1,000 down. It is refundable. But on a car that they're not going to see for years, like at least three years, right? At least three years. But you want to be one of the ones, right? Right? Ah, it's amazing. It's amazing. Uh, so that was the week. Are you ready? I'm ready. The big, the, there was only one thing that happened this week. My Oculus Rift came. <laughs> we have spent more than $5,000 building the ultimate virtual reality gaming machine because we realized we didn't have any Windows machines in this whole brick house studio that could run an Oculus Rift. Shall we walk over and do it? Yes. Carrie, you're gonna come with us? All right, let's do it. You guys could turn your chairs around. <laughs> you're gonna wanna see this. And you get to be the first, all right? We have an audience member when she heard that we had the Oculus, she was jumping for joy. So I guess what we should do first is talk about the Avergum. Do you have the sped up video of me building it? Yeah. All right, we're gonna, this, so we had to assemble it. And believe me, with my sausage fingers, this was not easy. Thank you to Jerry Wagley and Karsten Bondi, our producers who helped me with this. And, and uh, a lot of people in the chat room who kibitzed. And we managed to get the whole thing assembled. It is, just to give you the rundown, running a Intel 6700i7 processor, the 6700K, which we can, starts at four gigahertz, but we can overclock up to about 4.2 or 4.3 gigahertz. It's got a very nice top of the line NVIDIA 980 uh, video card, the titanium. We did not do SLI, and if you watch our earlier versions of the show, uh, in previous weeks, you'll see why Ryan Shroud said there's no benefit in Oculus, so one card's enough. We can put another one if we need to. Uh, we also put uh, a water-cooled pump in there for the CPU, which is running, and it's quiet, isn't it? I mean, this is nice. This thing can run very, very... I was, I was going to say, when are you turning it on? It's on. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. Um, what did I leave out? Oh, there's a... Okay, does everything look okay? A very... F no smoke okay. coming out? Here, we're going to go. Let's see if it starts. It's booting. It's booting. Look at that. 79, That's 96. the post cores. Oh, the screen! Screen! screen. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> M2 SSD, 500 gigabytes, and dual 300 gigabytes Boom. Caviar Red Western digital drives in RAID 1. This was all Ryan Shroud specs. Ryan, you're on the line, right? I'm here. Hey, Ryan. It worked. But you saw, we went through, and all through the week, uh, I spent some time on Friday. We had trouble... The BIOS was having trouble letting us use the M2 card and the other drives in RAID. That step-by-step -step that was in the Newegg review yeah. worked. Did you look Sometimes at it? Sometimes you find good information in the oddest places, right? Yeah, it was from an Asus engineer. But anyway, so we're, everything's working. Uh, before, th before the show, I, I logged into my Oculus account. This is, by the way, the kicks. The reason I got it so fast is that I was a Kickstarter contributor. I guess you were too, right? Yes. Yep. So the, uh, I think this is cool. Good on Oculus because uh, they didn't have to do this. We got our dev, dev kit. We got what we said we were buying for three hundred bucks, but they right. decided to uh, give everybody who kicks did a Kickstarter in 2012, August 2012, <laughs> to give us the release version. It's a. It's a an additional return on investment. I'm, I, you know what? All bad will is gone because I wasn't crazy about the fact they sold the company for two and a half billion after I gave them my three hundred bucks. I think I wanted to share. Anyway, there's your share. There's my share. <laughs> I'm very happy now. So Ryan, you've already installed yours. Yes. Yeah, we got his, uh, ours in on Monday. I uh, started messing around with it um, and went through the install and setup and played some games and been using it off and on throughout the week. Yep. All right. So far, so good. Uh, I, I logged into my account. I downloaded some games. What do you recommend, by the way? 
Uh, the obvious first choice is Eve Valkyrie, right? That's yeah, kind I downloaded of, that, yeah. Yeah, that's kind of the, the, the poster child for VR. It has been for several years. Um, it's one that you can easily, like, sit down in and understand immediately and kind of get started uh, uh, learning what VR is all about. Now, it is considered a, uh, they have, like, Oculus has this interesting rating category for experience levels, um, whether or not it's... Uh, uh, Extreme. Uh, you've got the box upside down. If you do that, you'll. <laughs> It'll all there fall out. By the way, do you know it's how hard this was? This has been sitting here since Thursday. Do you know how hard it <laughs> so was? So you haven't actually opened it yet. No. Oh. I okay. have been all staring right. at it since Thursday. Yeah. All right. What happens here? Do I pull the pull the drawer? No, just lift it up. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. It's actually very well presented. <laughs> um, you know, for six hundred dollar consumer electronic, they kind of boxed it like a six hundred dollar consumer Ooh, electronic. Ooh, let's get started. Wait a minute, I shouldn't pull that off. That's <laughs> <laughs> that was a sign. <laughs> Whoops. What's this? Uh, it's a little remote. I thought that um, was so my Lexus key fob. I mean, am I? Uh, uh, well, they didn't give you a car with it. No I'm car. Sorry to say. Right. That's pretty. So that's uh, a, that's a remote. So it's basically, um, it's, it's a wireless controller if you're doing games or experiences or videos and you don't ah. need to worry about using an Xbox controller, right? So I can go like this. Yep, and there's basically, you know, you've got your left, right, up, down buttons kind of in the circle it, area, center it, button Is it like control. a Wii mode? Is it motion sensitive? Um, it is not. No. Okay. It is not motion sensitive and it doesn't have any IR lights on it, so it's not tracked Okay. Uh, or anything like that, but it's basically there's there's there are a handful of games that you can play using just that, right? So like Defense Grid Two is kind of a okay. uh, the easiest one to try now, out there. Now I'm going to so. step through the screen here because yeah, uh, get to know your Rift. Please remove the protective films. Okay, this yeah, there is are things the, this covering is a, the lenses. This is a camera, right? Yep. So that's a camera. That is, uh, it's an infrared camera. So it's going to view and look for the infrared lights that exist oh, uh, behind wow. the plastic of your uh, headset. Uh, and that's how it tracks you. So like the it's eye just of a, a, the dead, cold eye of a shark looking at it. <laughs> it reminds me of the old eyesight camera, actually, if oh, you look yeah. at it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it kind yeah. of is, isn't it? So that, that's yeah. that, that tube. Yep. All right, I'm removing films, as they yep. say. Yep, you'll have to it's quite a bit undo of, a bunch of that stuff. Of yeah, there's a bunch on there. Film, but that's part of the packing and unpacking experience yep. these days. All right, so should I plug stuff in, or should uh, I wait till yeah. I get everything... Uh, the, the you can when you walk through the software setup, it actually will tell you like when go to ahead do and these stuff. Okay, in. so yeah, I, I don't think it will matter. So but this you can, well, you know, with, you know how it is with the USB. I, I like to wait until they tell me to because this is understood. A, that's USB three, and yep. then the Rift itself uses an HDMI cable port or uh, it uses USB three and an HDMI. So connection. I need so to do this, you need two free USB three. Yep. and a free HDMI, and they say plug it into the video card, not the motherboard HDMI. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, because I yep. spent a lot of money on that video card. I better use the video. <laughs> and uh, you'll need one additional USB 2.0 port to use the wireless Xbox controller that's in the box there as well. Oh, wow. They really, uh, they really, they didn't stint. But for si this, no. this is 600 bucks normally, right? And, and yeah, it, it's, it is. It's 599 is what the, the retail price is. I know they've had I think they, they've started refunding everybody's shipping fees. Oh, that's nice. Because uh, people were getting upset about the delays and kind of the uh, arrival times for the non-Kickstarter groups. Um, but if you look at it, if you hold the device, if you know, it, it feels high quality. It doesn't, you know, if you remember back to the DK1 or the DK2 and what it looked like much and felt. Much nicer. This is much this is, nicer. This is a refined device. Yeah. You know, they, they and did headphones, which is nice, built in. Yep. I'll just put this yep. on quickly. I, I'm not going to do anything with it, but I just want to show you how it looks. It's not. It feels a little smaller uh, than it, than the DK1 and 2. It is. It's smaller. It's lighter, which is obviously it's an advantage. As well. Uh, yeah. There's Velcro strap on the top and one on each side that you can uh, uh, loosen or tighten necessary. It's easier to. Um, uh, do it put while it on you're your face, it. Yeah. and then uh, pull the Velcro straps on the side. Just you know, pull them apart and then pull it back until right. it fits snug. Not too tight. You're you are going to get raccoon face with this, uh, regardless of how you of how right. you set it up. That's but a yeah, good fit. these are 1080p. The two together are 1080p, right? No, it's actually higher than that. It is. Uh, you're looking okay. at. I think it's 1200 by 2100 is the uh, okay. official resolution total. Um, 
Let me. I, I can look All that right. up for sure. So while you're looking, up, should we get Peter on now too as well? Good I to am. see you. Congra congratulations on the new arrival. Well, I, I I feel like I've had a baby here. Peter Rubin <laughs> is a senior editor at Wired and also uh, been writing about VR. And uh, you had a great article on kind of the history of the Oculus, the story of. And by the way, I'm really excited because I ha I didn't realize this. That's Palmer Lucky's uh, autograph there. Does it start with Palmer Lucky? Does what start with Palmer the Lucky? The Oculus. Uh, in in most ways, yeah. I mean, VR had had kind of disappeared for a lot of people, and and Palmer was one of a number of enthusiasts who hung out in this message board online uh, called the Meant to Be Seen. 3D forums, um, and he started thinking about VR as a means to get his his yeah, gaming better, uh, as a means of kind of supercharging his gaming rig. And as he looked into it, he thought, well, the miniaturization of everything and and the increasing kind of acceleration of processors, maybe there's something here. And so he started tinkering, and he he came through a a bunch of prototypes before he came up with the one that he kind of shared in the message boards. And then John Carmack said, you know. That's kind of neat. He was in the, the forums as well, and he said, could I take one of those to E3 with me? John Carmack of uh, Quake fame. Of Quake fame. Of Doom, uh, of Doom fame, actually, right? Quake that's when, Doom that's where we first became aware of Mr. Carmack, is Doom. That's true. Yeah. I think even before that, there, there were a couple of titles right. uh, that he was involved with, but uh, that kind of started the legend. And so when John Carmack brought that first <laughs> uh, electrical taped ready for prime time prototype to E3, everyone thought, oh, John Carmack's got VR figured out. And uh, he had very few kind of behind closed doors meetings. And then before long, it got straightened out that this was some kid named Palmer Lucky. Uh, and, and that led to the Kickstarter campaign, by which point there are a few more people on board and Oculus was an actual company. And fast forward a few years, and it's not just a little company. It is a kind of a major part that takes up a couple of buildings at Facebook. So things nice. have come a long way for them and Two they finally and got there. Two and a half billion dollar acquisition is not exactly bad exactly. At all. You know, I remember using a, a, a rig somewhat similar to this at SIGGRAPH in 1992 or 1993. Jaron Lanier, of course, the dreadlocked VR uh, evangelist. Um, I should get that out of your way. That's a very unflattering shot. Uh, and so this has, as you said, this has been around for a while, but uh, but never uh, really got anywhere as a consumer product until uh, Palmer Lucky and, uh, and Oculus came along. Yeah, back when Jaron was working on it and a couple right. of other companies right. as well, resolution was an issue and latency was an issue and, and the amount of power that it took to kind of break through those thresholds of, of comfort were just prohibitively expensive. And so in 2012, you know, Palmer Lucky was maybe one of the first people to synthesize the idea that this was possible now. Almost done updating. Uh, Ryan, at this point, anything uh, I should be, you should warn me about? Oh, this is one. I need to set up my Xbox. Where is that? Is that in here? <laughs> uh, it's if you open up the box in the right hand side oh, under flap. There's a secret Surprise. flap. Yeah. All right, and I probably need batteries. It's got batteries in, in there. there. Oh, yep. yeah, there they are. Oh, you know what? It's not those cheap Chinese knockoff batteries. It's Duracells. <laughs> That's a, I Nothing like it. But the best. I hate it when I see like, you know, Xi'an green batteries or something like that. All right, let's put these in right here. I've done this once or twice. I use rechargeables in my Xbox One controllers mm -hmm. at home, but uh, all right, that's all set up. Uh, so take out the little wireless uh, adapter USB there. extender. Uh -huh. It's good we have a lot of USB ports on this computer. This thing goes on and on and on. All right, you actually so might not need the cable. Uh, the USB I'll just dongle use the wireless, well, right? For me, yeah. So that's the cable. I don't need that. Let's get the dongle. Here's the dongle. Alex, would you do the dongle duty? <laughs> Thank you. All right, so he's going to plug in the dongle duty. It also comes with a wired extender. Yep. Jessica, just because this is your first Rift experience, here's a strange-looking O logo for you. Uh, is there a manual? This is a manual? Looks more like a... F oh, no, a this is the health and safety warning. Ah, screw yeah. that. All right. And then... Uh, and then uh, uh, for something that I have no idea what this does. Is this that, to, the clean? That's to remove the headphones. Oh, yeah. I thought it was to it's clean. A little, it's a little screwdriver, essentially, okay. to uh, uh, take off the headphones if you want to use your own your own USB headset or wired headset or whatever. Did You you can put it on the front, too, Alex. Is there a front Why don't you put it on the front? That, is there a front one? Yeah. I did not see it. Yeah, it's hidden under this uh, immovable object. There is. All right. Connect your Xbox wireless adapter, it says. All right, we've connected it. 
Next. Oh, wait a minute, I need a USB extender as well. Oh no, that's only if you can't fit it in. Okay. Start your Xbox controller. Okay, press and hold. All right, they're they're pairing as they're supposed to. You'll have to pair it. You'll have to hit the button on the wireless on the adapter wireless as well. and right, on the controller. Yeah, I see that. Yeah. yeah, there's one on the top right. of the controller. Oh, on the top. I see it. Oh, it's been a long time. Thank you. See, this is why you're here, Ryan. <laughs> Having just done this this week, it's like, oh, yes, all of these things. I am yeah. breathless with anticipation. <laughs> Somebody got that. <laughs> Uh, it'll blink. It's blinking faster. Actually, click to the next screen. I think it's yeah. waiting. Oh. Kind of each bit of this oh, is a prompt. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Boy, they really, they, they expect you to be an idiot. And you know what? That's They're not. Might not, yeah, it might not be the worst idea. Not being disappointed right now. All right, press and hold. So we're connecting the Xbox. This is actually, I thought the firmware updates were taking a long time. This is actually the longest, uh. I think we've had to wait. Should I press this again? Maybe I need to press that again. It gave up. It said, well, I guess I'm not going to see you. Jessica, have you ever done any VR at all? Did you do gear VR or cardboard or anything? Both, yeah. Both. There you right. go. Yeah. So we are now con connected there. Now, I did take the liberty of going to the store and buying hundreds of dollars worth of games. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you know how an Xbox controller works, I'm sure. Automatically register. Yes, thank you. That was, that was easy. I'm logged in. You have to log into your Oculus account. So you either have to create one or log in. And by the way, they also want a uh, credit card. Now, set up your sensor. What's your suggestion here, Ryan? Your sensor works blah, blah, blah. How tall, am, how tall are you, Jessica? 5'4". Uh, 5'4", five, four. Five, four, all right. Do I have to do this every time? All right. It basically is telling, it's going, that's how it's going to know how far you are above the okay. ground level. Okay. Yeah. Place your sensor... You'll be using at least three feet away. I think we're good. Point and tilt the glossy side towards your face. Can you see the glossy side? Yes, I can. Yes, she can. Remove <laughs> anything that blocks you from the sensor, including Leo. Okay. Now, confirm. Oh, uh, we got to see if this works. Okay, confirm sensor tracking. <laughs> sensor tracking confirmed. Yay. Now, personalize your rift. This means basically fit it to your noggin, right? Yep. All right. Customize, loosen, blah, blah. Why, they really think you're an idiot. Holy cow. Okay. But you got to admit, it would have been better if it said, fit it to your noggin. Yeah. You know, fit like, it to your, okay. Ah, fit it to your now, noggin. Now, Jessica, we've arranged a space for you. This is a stool that you'll be sitting on so that you don't actually fall off a cliff or anything. All right. Now we'll do that. Find the lens slider. See this thing? Yes. That's the lens slider. That'll help you focus once you put this on, just as, just as the Gear VR does. All right, continue in your headset. Put on the headset. Put All it right. on like a baseball hat, you, back end first. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. That works. Oh, Is it too go. tight or not? No, that's perfect. Okay. Adjust your focus with that little lever. Oh, where did that? There it is. Okay. I might also suggest that she tilt one of the headphones to the side so she can still hear you talk to her. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I'm pretty loud. <laughs> All right. Uh, now what? It says push in and slide the... Okay. Oh, there we go. Does it have... Is it asking for your input at some point or...? Uh, no. Let's see. To continue, press the select button on the it, remote. Here is your remote, my or dear. Or the A button on your controller. Here you go. There's your remote. And the select okay. button's that big button in the middle. Middle button. All right. Yeah. Continue in oh. VR. All right, put on your headset. Okay. Oh, hello, Simpson. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, let's see. Stand in the position you plan to use VR and look straight ahead. You know what? I'm moving the stool out of your way. That actually is, <laughs> that is not helpful. Uh, so, Peter, is it everything you had hoped it would be, or is it, uh, is it you feel like we have a way to go still? Performatively, it's everything that I hoped it would be, or at least it's everything that the three and a half years of development right. have kind of led me to hope for. I, I used the DK1, the first development kit, and I got kind of got nauseous a little bit. Oh, yeah, 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 it had problems. I mean, it was it was a proof of concept, and they had latency issues, and they hadn't cracked positional tracking or low persistence displays or mitigating judder, or, you know, asynchronous time warp, which was John Carmack's uh, contribution to, to the whole deal. And so there, there are a lot of things, both hardware and, and processor side, that are really contributing to kind of a more stable experience. But I guess where I think it 
falls short, at least on launch day, is the um, the number of experiences that there are for you. When the gear launched, there were more than 100 things ready in the store. Uh, right Show now, Jessica. Th- she's really kind of excited. Hold on a second. She, <laughs> no, she, this is it. This she's, is the tour. She's getting the experience. She's walking around. It says you can skip. So we're seeing on the screen what she's what, seeing in the headset. Yep, there's an export. And so what she's about this, to start, I'm gonna make this, this thing screen. called Dream Deck, is actually kind of a... A, a remastered version of the suite of demos that Oculus built to show people uh, at the first developer summit that they had at Oculus Connect uh, when they unveiled the Crescent Bay prototype. So what she's seeing uh, kind of was first shown in late 2014, but they've redone a lot of this stuff. What's your boyfriend's name? Tommy. Tommy, come here, because you're going to have to backstop just in case she <laughs> she falls over or throws up. You're, it's your job. Okay. There you go. Just just stand on that side just in case, and we'll, we'll make sure she doesn't fall over so you've got some support behind you jessica and there's cute tommy's here there, which she loves. She lo- you like cute animals who doesn't like cute animals oh that's all oh it went dark where are you jessica are you there ah! Ah! <laughs> it's it's a saying hello Hi. Can now, you crouch hear him? down crouch down see get lower oh oh you're actually at his height peter i'm thanking you for being here you're our guide there are a couple of fun Easter eggs that they that they snuck in kind of throughout the the suite. So if I can if I can point those out, I think please I think do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is awesome. This is amazing. There's his spaceship. So uh, you're on a planet now, <laughs> Jessica. Does it feel Does it feel real? Does it? Uh... It does. It really does. Yeah. 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 It's amazing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get a handheld? Do you guys have a handheld for Jessica? Tell, tell her to look forward over the edge. Look over the edge, though. Be careful. You might get a little, oh! It's so cold. <laughs> I'm glad you're here, Tommy. <laughs> and then that billboard back over her left shoulder is a little Palmer Lucky cameo. Oh, look over your left shoulder. Oh, too late. Palmer's gone. So he's in, the, he's in there, huh? Yeah, he shows up on a billboard. Oh, now we're on a street. Oh, maybe he's in this in this area. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think we can hear what, what you, she's hearing. What are you saying? What are you hearing? There's a Tretosaurus Rex coming straight at oh, me. Oh, no. Does he, does he look dangerous? <laughs> oh, wow. No, he's friendly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, real friendly. Is he? So there's audio going on right now. Uh, yes. Hey, you can kind of hear people, so. Yeah, yeah. Hi. Oh, she's patting a Tyrannosaurus. That seems like a bad idea. Just challenge oh, wow. it to a push. Oh! <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> so somebody in the chat from Greenbit says, I don't think I'm going to wait for the lower price. I'm buying it. Yes. All right, I'm going to try it a little bit. I'll try. I did it. notice that, like, wait, so the funny thing about the, using the Xbox controller is that as soon as you move forward, you feel your stomach immediately go. Uh, <laughs> you know, like, like, you know, it's like, so, you know, you're actually. And uh, that's the problem, isn't it? I mean, well, you it, just can't move very much. It's not yeah. like you're moving. Yeah, uh, you're, you're, you're not moving. And you're, so, so your inner ear yeah. is suddenly going. Uh, I don't agree. Yeah, ga- games that utilize the left thumbstick is. Right. Most don't. They've learned to stay away from that because offloading locomotion out to, to something that isn't your body is, is kind of a recipe for that imbalance and that right. simulator sickness. Honestly, I still I think the right thumbstick has the same issue. When if I if there's two ways for me to turn my head, my viewport, either the right thumbstick mm-hmm. or my face, that to me is a trigger point for for my kind of discomfort in VR. You're um, absolutely right. I I flip my thumbsticks. It is it is the right oh, it's the right okay. thumbstick that's the that's the poison <laughs> pen. You're right. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's head movement mm-hmm. that that really does it. Yeah, yeah I, this is a good demo and uh, you should be warned this is labeled as an extreme uh, in the like I was gonna say earlier, I think uh, Oculus has three different levels of um, what they rate their experiences at. You know, beginner, intermediate, and intense or extreme, whatever it is. Um, this this one is on the high end of that. Yeah, this is uh, yeah, you're right. I mean, it's quite quite vivid, and I agree that the sound makes a difference. I noticed that they had a button for space adaptation syndrome. In other words, if you get queasy, <laughs> press this button. <laughs> I don't know why it worries. It's all above your mouth, so it's yeah. I could it's not like you're gonna get anything on it. <laughs> <laughs> it. This is a this is actually a huge improvement over the uh, DK1. I have to say, this is quite remarkable. 
Oh, DK1 uh, was all off the shelf components. I mean, right. this is all stuff that's been custom engineered. It feels much more like a product. I mean, I think mm -hmm. even with the DK2, you felt like you, it, was, it was fine. You know, you got to, it was good. It was a good place to play. So I'm curious to see what you see. Are you getting a vibe as well, Leo? Pardon me? Are you getting a vibe as well? Yeah, the uh, I'm getting rumble from the Xbox controller. No, no, are oh, you getting, am I getting the vibe? I <laughs> yeah. thought you said, am I getting the vibe? Yes, I, we ordered the Vive, and I know you really like your favorite Vive game is the uh, work is the going to work game. Yeah, Job Simulator. Job Simulator, which is a very <laughs> strange thing to like, but so I'm I'm just wrote to, I'm just floating around in this thing, huh? Yeah, well, there is a game to play. Um, you will eventually run out of oxygen, and the game will be over if you don't. Oh uh, well, I better play the game then. No rush. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, no pressure, just, but you know, you're gonna die. You're looking for the green blinky things that look like canisters. There's a yeah, few of them. Yeah, I see one of those. Yeah. I'm you going reach out to and grab them with the uh, right trigger, I think is what it is. Oh, hey, it's over my head. <laughs> right trigger? Yeah, it's the, uh, it's the smaller one. It it's says the X canister. to hold. Yeah, hold oh, X. crap. Oh, I'm going to throw up. Uh. <laughs> this, this is way too realistic. Holy moly. All right. So what's interesting is there's also, as I suspected, some so a little bit of suspension of disbelief because you can see the screen door effect if you're looking, and but uh, but pretty quickly you kind of get engaged. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I did find I I got to use the Vive a little while ago, and and uh, I I, um, I I did I did notice that with the controller that you could actually go out and grab with it, that they had there, there were some really great interactive examples that. You know, I found myself immediately just kind of lost in the, you know, in the process. Yeah. Yeah. The, the motion controller that the Vive ships with uh, is is a big kind of differentiator right now. Absolutely. Oculus has theirs that are coming later in the year. They just knew they weren't going to be ready and they wanted to get the product out. So those will be available in a number of months. The right. Oculus Touch controllers. And when they showed it, I thought it was going to be, I thought it was going to be silly, but I found myself, they had this thing where the engine comes out, you can open up the engine and work on it and hit things and move things around. And Yeah, that was Job Simulator. You were yeah. playing Job Simulator. Oh, is that, yeah. is that Job Simulator? I didn't know which, yeah. what, what that was It's called. like cartoony graphics and stuff, right? But, it, well, no, no, it was pretty realistic. It was a big, oh. it was like in a, you're like in a spaceport and you have these, this huge engine comes out and you can open up the engine and you can, uh, but it wasn't very cartoony. It was not pretty, as good as, as robot repair, I think. Using is a what Xerox yeah. machine and a stapler. <laughs> <laughs> Which you can do in Job Simulator. Can, can yeah. you chase people around with a stapler? You can you can Xerox books. That's the only thing. Xerox books and, and staple people. <laughs> Sorry, I'm. That's why ah, I don't have a job. A survivor has been detected. This is fun. I could see playing this for hours on end. And then not be. Yeah. And then coming into the real world and going, God, I hate my life. <laughs> You don't understand. I was an astronaut for the last I've two hours. I've been an astronaut. I just saved the world. Now I have to empty the trash. Oh, 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 oh. What's happening? What's happening? Oh, this is like gravity. I just got blown out of my ship. Oh, <laughs> Alex. Oh, don't let go of the rope. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Ah. Okay. Man, oh man, I'm glad I didn't have pickles for breakfast. All right. It says my suit's damaged and my oxygen's leaking. But other than that, you're doing just fine. I don't know what I'm doing. I should have memorized these controls. <laughs> I'm sure the astronaut thought that too. <laughs> Before I did the spacewalk, I should have figured I out how to get back the in. All right, I don't. This is not fun for everybody, but uh, that's <laughs> but fun for me. Uh, that is awesome. By the way, this is getting hot. That's normal, huh? Yeah. Yeah. It'll, 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 it will stay at that temperature pretty much the whole time. Okay. We, I've left mine on on games for several hours to see if it did get like hotter. It doesn't get any and, hotter and, and become a problem, and it hasn't been so. Wow, Peter Rubin from Wired Magazine. Any final thoughts before we uh, sign off? Uh, I don't think there is a way to, to get across the experience of VR better than, than seeing you play adrift. So uh, <laughs> I, I will defer to what we just watched. I'm breaking out in a sweat here. <laughs> that was scary. Thanks so much for joining us. The uh, story, the inside.
The story of how Oculus cracked the impossible design of VR is in Wired. Uh, is it online as well as in the magazine? Uh, that story is actually digital only. Uh, there oh, okay. is an essay in the current issue about something related in VR uh, and then a, a review of the Rift also on Wired.com. Very nice. Peter, great to meet you and thanks for joining us. Thanks I'm for sure having we'll me, Leo. We'll be talking more. This is going to be the year of VR. I think there's no question yep, about absolutely. it. Absolutely. And uh, Ryan, thank you for helping us build the ultimate VR gaming machine. Of course, absolutely. I think I'm glad it, you got it up and running. It handled this pretty well. I mean, it's uh, it's uh, this is sweet. This is really yeah, I, sweet. I, you, you'll be set for a while with that hardware for sure. Uh, uh, but and I think what I think would my takeaway from this is. Even if pe if people are interested in VR, if you had a pre-order for uh, a headset, whether it be an HTC or an Oculus, uh, if you're like really worried that you're also going to have to spend three thousand dollars or five thousand no, dollars to get a PC to run no, it, you're not no. going to have to do that, yeah. right? We built a very competent nine hundred dollar PC that will run a drift and it will run all these games at 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 great in great experiences. So um, it's still an expensive project, right? Six hundred bucks for a headset, nine hundred dollars for a PC. You know, you're in there for fifteen hundred total, um, but it, it's less expensive than I think many people feared it would be. And, uh, the, ex at the, and the experience that we just had would be all, as good on that thousand dollar machine. Yeah, it's interesting. We could talk about it another time if you want. Like both these guys are going in different routes in terms of how they adjust for that. Valve's uh, like Steam VR, Open VR is really emphasizing variable quality. So if they detect you're going to go below 90 frames per second, <laughs> they will actually dynamically adjust the resolution that is being rendered out to the screen, um, and and make sure you don't uh, uh, break your immersion due to stutter and frame rate. Um, in, in that way. And Oculus is doing a lot of late time warp where if you're missing a frame and your interval you're supposed to get it, it will actually use the previous frame and distort it, rotate it very quickly, you know, like based on the direction of your head movement. Um, so it's it's very interesting technical issues that they're they're coming on uh, with both both headsets. And for us, for me personally, it's a very difficult transition in terms of how we evaluate performance between these headsets and between different GPUs on these headsets. But uh, that's my next couple of months, I'm guessing. Guessing, figuring yep. all that out. It's a, but with the same with the same hardware, it, mm -hmm. they are going to keep on increasing the quality of some of this stuff. So if you're looking at buying, building a PC or buying a PC that's going to last for the next two years, let's say, you may yep. want to think about getting something a little bit more powerful to make sure that you're future proofing it a little bit, at least until the next big headset comes out. I, I, well, yeah, that's what I agree. we did, right? I mean, right. We, yeah. this is that. I mean, that's what this is. But that's the well, argument. That was our for first conversation, the... Ryan. Is should we just get a low end minimum GPU video card? Uh, it, so that next year we could buy a better card. And exactly. you, you said, no, get the high-end card, and I'm glad we did, I yeah. think, yeah. And by yeah. the way, that water cooling is fantastic. This thing, I mean, that, that it doesn't, didn't break a sweat, you know? I mean, this Keeps this, everything running quiet, too. Yeah. Yeah. Really nice. All right, well, I think we're going to let uh, our studio audience play with this uh, as we uh, continue with the new screensavers. Thank you so much, Ryan Shrout, PCPer.com, their hardware leaderboard and their articles about the subject, and in fact, I think for the next few years, uh, you guys are going to be somebody to uh, stay in touch with because uh, obviously a lot of people are going to want to be doing what we just did. And, yep. And your coverage is excellent. And of course, don't forget Ryan and Patrick Norton every uh, Friday on This Week in Computer Hardware. Thursday. Thursday, I'm sorry. Thursday, yeah. yep. Thank you, Ryan. Absolutely. Thanks, guys. Have All fun. All right, take care. And thanks for helping us build that. Now, we actually have more to do before we're done. We have to show you the keyboard and the mouse. We won't do that today. We'll do it next week. Uh, and then we still don't have our beautiful curved monitor. But maybe by next week we'll have that. But who needs a monitor when you got a VR headset? I think everybody in the staff, everybody in the audience is saying, okay, get out of there. It's time for me to try it. Before we do, though, I want to tell you a little bit about audible.com. We live in an amazing time, right? I mean, you can immerse yourself in games like this, or you can use audible.com and immerse yourselves in amazing stories where your brain paints the picture. And I got to tell you, what an experience listening to an audiobook. I'm just finishing the Hamilton biography by Ron Chernow. I'm not sure where I'm going to go next. I have some really interesting choices. I like to alternate fiction with nonfiction. What are we listening to now, uh, Lisa? That's a great book it's it's woman wakes up and she's for six months she's been living with some stranger and she doesn't know who he is and her husband arrives and says who is this guy i don't know who are you oh my husband hi and oh my god it's just whew, thrillers whatever you're looking for they have more than 180,000 titles all kinds of literature fiction nonfiction, periodicals even performances 
Uh, and I just, I love my Audible. I know you will, too. So that's why we've arranged for a free book for you. All you have to do is go to audible.com slash NSS. You'll be signing up for the gold account. That's a book a month, plus the Daily Digest of the New York Times or the Wall Street Journal. If you don't like it, cancel in the first 30 days. You'll pay nothing. Your book is yours forever. You get to keep that. I think you're going to like it. That's why I tell everybody I know. I've been an Audible member for 16 years. I, and I have read hundreds of books, and I love Audible. You will, too. Audible.com slash NSS. Remember last week we had Scott John, our uh, expert on gadgets for the uh, health club, a health set for med... That's, that's a terrible... What the hell am I saying? I want to be an astronaut again. Scott Jung was here last week talking about med gadgets. He's from Med Gadget Magazine. He's got a new one. It's called MediSafe, a way to track your uh, health reminders. Watch. Hi, I'm Scott Jung. I'm a senior editor at MedGadget.com and also on Twitter at Scott Jung. So today I want to tell you about an app that will help you remember to take your medication. It's called MediSafe, and it's free for iOS and Android. With MediSafe, you add all your medication in the med cabinet, specifying how often you need to take it, if there's any food interactions, the name of the doctor that prescribed it, and the app actually even supports vitamins and supplements. Once you've done all this, your meds are added to the pill box, which gives you a visual representation of which meds you need to take and when. And your phone will, of course, give you a friendly reminder when it's time. Now, if you miss a dose, it'll show up on a weekly adherence report that you can view and send to your doctor or someone else. You can also set the app to notify a med friend, which is a family member or friend that you invite if you miss a dose. The iOS version of MediSafe also includes a really handy Apple Watch app. From your watch, you can view your upcoming medication schedule, mark that it's been taken, choose to reschedule the dose, or skip it all together. And the Apple Watch app will even show any special instructions you've added, say if you need to take it with food. For more cool health tech, you can find me on Twitter at Scott Jung, and also be sure to visit medgadget.com. Scott Jung, he'll be back. We got lots more great tips from uh, Scott and medgadget.com. Uh, I like that. It's pretty cool. It's better than I thought. Now, yeah. I had used the DK1, the developer kit one, and I was really underwhelmed. And then who brought, somebody brought by, uh, like I was in a game and I was running around and stuff, and I got very queasy. Right. They've come a long way. Yeah, I think, I think the reactiveness, the resolution, the controls, it's everything. Vivid. It, yeah, it definitely feels much more refined. I don't want to oversell it because you know when you're in it, you know that you're wearing a helmet. It's not like you're kind of there. You, there's, there's, you can see the edges of the space that you're looking at, and the screen's visible. But, uh, you know, you quickly, the suspension of disbelief does kick in, and now you're in this game and you're trying to do something. Well, you do feel like you're at the beginning. I think this is going to be this is more... The Look, at Lisa's trying. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think this is going to be have a lot more legs than, than 3D necessarily. I, I agree with you. 3D has no legs as far as I'm well, concerned. Well, the new this legs is for real 3D, 3D is... is, uh, is well, let's talk about this because uh, it's one thing to have the helmet and the content it's another thing to create it, and that's something you're an expert in. You're a content creator. We're doing some of that. I'm sure you're very interested in creating immersive. Immersive video is different from gaming because it's real it world. It is, and and you know we've been this 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 whole thing has happened very slowly. You know, in the early '90s, uh, I was using um, we were taking pictures with film. Right. And we'd scan the film, <laughs> and then we had the Apple VR you know uh, toolkit. You'd write yeah. scripts that would go you know blend all your and basically really it was a sphere that you could just look around in. Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so that was in those QuickTime VR, and we used them for reflection maps for movies, and right. and then. Uh, the video, we thought about the video stuff probably in the early 2000s. You know, you could take a bunch Someday. of little cameras, but we couldn't find cameras that were small enough. Right. Um, and now, you know, all of that stuff is accelerating very quickly. I mean, I think that the thing that if people are interested in, uh, you know, playing around with content creation, the first thing that you, anybody wants to get is this. Is this. I, I was so, so happy is, with that. 350 bucks? Uh, you know, I have some great photos from this. You know, I, I travel around all over the place, and I have yeah. ones of me. Here we go. This is the, uh, but this is the Theta. This and is the Theta S, so this, Theta is, the S. this is the third edition. And I have the the last version, and this is you know, obviously a huge bump up from that. Um, I bought it. I, I bought it the minute I could see it. So that's a still. Right, that's a still, and then you can you can switch to video. So I click this here, and uh, I should. Uh, you could just put it, and you could just put it down, and then w I, you could vlog. I was doing vlogs with it on the uh, uh, on our last vacation, and and the thing is, you want to do something where there's stuff to see all around. Right. 
Right. And one of the things that's, that's great about this right now is that you can actually get, uh, there you go, oh yeah, sorry, I turned, turned the wrong, so you can see it blinking here, so it's doing everything. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody who's wearing the headset when you do that is going to be like, whoa. Well, the funny so, thing is, when you're using this, you have to get out of the habit of pointing it at the subject. It's right. pointing at the subject no matter where it is, or because <laughs> right. everything is here, so you can stand here and talk and move around, and then you don't have to look into the camera. Yep. The camera doesn't have to be aimed at you. Well, and it's funny because you'll take a selfie, and everyone else in the restaurant or the place it's you're there. At looks, but, they, but they also look at you like, is he just taking a picture of me? And I'm like, no, right. no, he took a picture of me. Everybody and I took you. A, yeah. Um, and you. So, but the, uh, <laughs> but that you know, the, so, look uh, down because what's neat about that particular this particular device is it stitches out. So he's holding it on a selfie stick, right? but you don't see it. And I actually have a tripod that opens up right at the very bottom. And literally, you see nothing but these little legs that stick yeah. out. You know, so it's, stitch, it's almost it's nothing. Really, in previous efforts, there's always been a hole at the top and a hole at the bottom. This really is a full sphere, well, and the camera's even taken out of it. Right, and, and the resolution's a little bit lower than some of the stuff that we've seen. But at 1080p, it's a great way to preview things, and the stills are... They're you really know, good. They're almost 6K wide, yeah. so they're they're very very 5600 or something wide. Now, as, so as always, you have to pro you can't just take the stills and put them on a site because it's really just two giant fisheye. I don't know. It's eight millimeter or right. even wider pictures. You have to use the software to render them into a sphere, or if you're doing the video, it has to rent stitch the video and make it a rendered video. Exactly, and then you can upload those to YouTube and Facebook. And That's what's cool. Yeah. So you can in the past, you'd have to go to a special site. Theta has one. Right. Data360.com, but now but, and then you I can guess go as of yesterday, YouTube. I think that YouTube announced that they're doing. Uh, they have a. Oh, you can now embed them, so you can, you know, of course, upload them. There's a the, part of the cardboard toolkit is that you can now inc incorporate it into Android, iOS. Um, you can embed them on your website, all through, you know, the YouTube uh, platform, and of course, uh, Facebook's doing a ton of work on it as well. So we have. What, what's also really great right now is that we have two uh, companies that are, uh, ha you know doing a lot of development in this area. Right. But, but but the great thing about this is that, and this gets into one of the challenges we have with these cameras, is the nodal points, uh, if you actually tear one of these apart, it's actually little prisms that go right down, so the nodal point is almost on top of it. And the nodal point is where the, the lens actually rotates. You know, so if you rotate around the nodal point, you'll not get any parallax, which means you won't get any seams. And the fact that there's only two cameras and they're right on top of each other the, is uh, two lenses and the, and, and the sensors are actually right on top of each other means that uh, the, the seams that you would normally see without any, any work at all, you get almost no seams. The only time you see seams is in low light environments when you're hand holding it because of the, and that is a, um, just a registration between the, the shutters. Um, but but otherwise it is uh, it's pretty amazing. Um, I've taken them of you know people blowing out candles you know for their for their birthday and it's just an awesome thing to send to your family because it's they can rotate around and look at it and and they can see you know your daughter your mom or whatever uh, in the uh, in the video itself. So it's pretty slick. People on uh, the chat room are saying, oh, I don't like the fisheye look of it. You're seeing a fisheye look because you're looking at it on a 2D screen. If you put right. on Gear VR or the Oculus Rift, you wouldn't see it. This is this is a video I shot on our uh, last vacation, and that's me, but you know what? You can look at everything that's going on at the same time around me, and this is why you want to shoot this at somewhere where there are things going on. So there's somebody practicing parachuting. Here's somebody practicing uh, boogie boarding. We're on a, gi on a giant cruise ship. There's the sky. So, you know, this is a, I think it's a great way to vlog because Suddenly, you're vlogging, and uh, people can see everything in the environment. There's Michael, and, and there I am. Um, I think that's just a pretty amazing way to do this. This is with the Theta, but you see, it's not quite as crisp in as video be. as it is in still. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, that's it's why. Tiny. Yeah, absolutely. That's that. It's because there's so many right pixels. Right yep. Yeah. For this, still, it's pretty fun. I mean. Oh yeah. And imagine this in the. Uh, you put this on the in the in the cardboard of the Rift. And suddenly you're seeing you're you're in the uh, action. Absolutely. Now it's a video, so it's not interactive. You can't change the scenario. You could just look around. You can experience it. In right. some ways, that's better. You don't get the queasiness quite as much. You, <laughs> well, seriously, you're not yeah. moving, right? Yep. No, absolutely. Uh, unless you do a lot of this. <laughs> so let's make something even better. What's the so next there's step? A, there's a couple different um, steps between that. So uh, one of the ones, of course, is a lot of us started using GoPros. GoPros were inexpensive, and most importantly, they were small. So we're able to put them very, very close together. So a lot of people have these little six uh, camera rigs. Um, you'll see GoPro ha has took it and kind of made it more um, 
organized. Is and more those, cameras better? Not necessarily. Um, what more cameras get you, obviously, is you don't have to have quite the same uh, fisheye lens, which is going to give you higher quality. The problem is the more cameras that you add, the more seams that you have, uh, and the more, so there's more places where you may, it may not blend perfectly. This does look good, though. Um, yeah, so you can really get some, now, a lot of times when you see some of these examples, there has been some work in post to uh, ah, fix some of the issues. So there's, okay. there's actually a growing business if you're looking for a new business of um, paint fixing uh, this kind of panorama. Interesting. So there's probably a little bit of work done with this given how close they are to things, um, you know, where they took a couple things out and fixed it. Uh, maybe not, there you can see one seam right there. How much is uh, that GoPro? Uh, I don't know how much the GoPro is with, you know, generally you're Didn't looking at Didn't they say like about, 18 grand, I think they no, said? That's, now that's the, that, that um, and here you can see some of the little issues on his knee. You know, you see some yeah. of the blending and stuff like Just that. As you would if you did a panorama and stitched you didn't a get panorama. It quite right. yep. you sometimes they're little weird artifacts. Exactly. So, so, but the uh, um, the eighteen thousand dollar version. So you can build one of these for about three thousand, four thousand. Buy a bunch of cameras and glue them together. Yeah, and there's plenty of stuff online. You can print the the rig. I right. mean, we we printed a lot of our rigs. Um, right. And but you can buy them from like three three sixty heroes and a, a, you know a, a, a couple other companies. Um, so about three thousand bucks. Now the eighteen thousand dollar rig you're talking about is the Odyssey, which is something that Google built, and that's 16 cameras uh -huh. uh, wrapped around, and you lose a little bit on the top and bottom, so it doesn't go all the way up and all the way down, but the quality is really high, but you also can't, you, you upload it to the server and let it do its thing. Now, some people are building uh, also with Blackmagic cameras. If you, if you look at the Blackmagic Micro, um, one of the things that's interesting about the Blackmagic Micro is when you turn it on its side, it's 65 millimeters uh, wide, and why right. that's important is that's about the same distance that your eyes are. You'll see what the, they have these tiny little cameras, and a lot of people have been, we, <laughs> have been putting um, 185 degree, 180 degree lenses on them. Uh, and so that's another, uh, you get a lot of quality, you, you get a live feed, so if you want to do live streaming of, of that, um, that's another one. And then after that, they, you get into lots of custom rigs, and the, probably the next one that's a turnkey rig is uh, the uh, Ozo. The Nokia and Ozo. this is the Ozo, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. <laughs> so yeah, so this is the Ozo here, and uh, just went on sale. This is from Nokia, of all people. Yeah, just just started shipping a couple weeks ago, um, and what this has is it has eight cameras. Uh, with eight uh, microphones, and so it's able to produce, uh, you know, you know, surround sound. Are these you'll, the microphones? Yeah, you'll these see little... those are the, these are the little okay. microphones there, and uh, and so those are. Uh, now it's got now these le now what's what's great about this that's made it a lot easier in a lot of ways is you know, those are all the, that's the angle. This of all is the, the live output. That's that, the live output. Yeah. Okay, so that's see the, I'm waving over there. That's that's actually live output. Wow. And all so right. and so this is uh, so that way you can kind of view what's going on and see how it's working. Now the uh, and there's a little bit of latency, a couple seconds as it goes through there. What it's doing is it's taking all of those and it's putting it onto one SDI signal, HD SDI signal. And what's great about that is that instead of having all these cameras and this, this you know, trying to figure out how to turn the cameras on, you just hit play or hit right. record and it's grabbing it from well, one video signal. Analogous to the Theta, which gives you, if you don't stitch it, this, these two fisheye images, this is just giving, giving you more of them. It's yeah. giving you eight. And these are, I think it's 192 degrees uh, per, per lens. So they okay. see a little bit behind themselves. And they're pretty high resolution, I would guess. Yes. At $60,000. I'd expect that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's it, it is a uh, and it'll 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 also it's able to do um, unlike the theta it's also able to do 3D. Um, you can actually look at a live output there. That's actually from uh, when we stitched. did a Mac break. This is a stitch still um, from Mac break, um, and uh, we're gonna have the video up. And there again, next week. because you're seeing this on a 2D screen, that's why it's like it a Mercator all, map. Yeah, it's, it's kind of Mercator it, projection. Yeah. yeah. But if you were looking at this in a headset, it would look normal. It'd be like you were there, right? Exactly. Yeah. You know, and so, and that is one image from a video. So it, it can do very high. That's the same, very good quality. So it can do the same resolution that the stills right. are on this right. um, in video. So um, so it's uh, it's, a, it's a pretty slick little the, um, camera. The interesting thing is, as much as that camera is, the devices to look at it are not expensive. You can use a 2D screen in Facebook and YouTube, as we right. were just doing. But if you get a Google Cardboard device, which are five bucks or less even, exactly. You can look around within it, and it senses. You have to have a phone in it, obviously. So I guess you should add the cost of the phone. Gear VR from Samsung works similarly. You have to have a Samsung phone. It goes in this headset. You don't have to hold it anymore. It's on your head, much like the Oculus is, and you look around. And actually, Gear VR is an Oculus product. They're using Oculus technology. Right, and the Gear VR is great. We've got a couple of those. I in the really office. like my and, Gear and VR. The new, and the new S7 is much better. Um, the yep. ver version. Yeah. And, uh, 
and, and we use them as we're testing to see how things are going. And, and, um, and you can now, you know, that what's coming next with a lot of these rigs is being able to stream live. So I think we're going to see isn't more of the, that. Uh, isn't the NCAA, isn't that going to be done in VR? The Final Four, I think. So how would I watch that? Yeah, see that? <laughs> but uh, does that mean I have to have an Oculus Rift? Or cardboard, probably. Yeah, um, wow. The, and, and, and I think it's, it's only 180 degrees. degrees. Yeah. It is Gear VR. Well, and there's a lot of, I'm there's, sorry, there's a lot of people. <laughs> sorry, I walked, wandered out of my shot to read the screen. That's so so the, there's a lot of um, talk about whether 360 is required or 180 because 180 gets you more resolution. So a lot of these, the, even the streaming tools are, you know, you're, there's well, a limited resolution. Well, in a basketball resolution. game, I don't care what the people behind me are doing. I exactly. want to see the game. And that game right? can be higher resolution if you only do 180. Yeah. Okay. So, so there's some people that are doing Next VR and a couple other companies are doing uh, 180. 80 solutions typically with reds yeah uh, we use the you know black magic um, but the uh, so it's just a, it's just a matter of what you think is important there's a lot of religiousness this is this is the little black magic camera that that we that we a lot these of are pop amazing. lenses on yeah, yeah we have a lot of those so yeah. anyway so the um, uh, those are great because they're hackable as well so if you're developing a camera system you can there's a, there's already tools on it so that I can control the camera completely uh, from my computer, from I can build Arduino controllers, I can do all kinds of stuff for it. So it's, it's so fast. This is happening so fast. And it's the nexus of these cameras getting better and better. It's uh, uh, the technology is advancing very quickly. Uh, the software is coming along very quickly. And as you just saw with the Oculus Rift, the ways that we can look at it one, are that, coming along very quickly. I think this is a market that's about to explode. Well, and I think that's what's really fortunate for us is that Facebook made a big move, yep. Google's made a big move, yep. uh, where those two companies have, I think if they hadn't stepped into the crowd, this could have fizzled out again. I think it, the fact that they that we have these two giant interactive companies willing to put real money into it, and there's rumors, of course, that Apple is going to dip their toe into it at some point in the future, I, that that's going to help drive it as well as, as big companies deciding that they're going to make it work and not just the movie industry trying to make an extra ten dollars because a lot of times this gets can you know get, it's get it gets talked about in the same light as right. 3d right. but I think there's a lot more you can do with it because imagine with this time you're going to be happy to see a stream from NCAA or um, you know we did some tests with the PGA tour uh, with golf but pretty soon you're going to be able to watch this thing and if you look over to one side, you'll see your email and text going by, <laughs> and then you'll be able to look over, and then you'll it's be able to look, interface. and then like while you're watching, you're going to see, you, right. you might even get to a point where it's, you can say, show me all the players, and there's little names following yep. the players around, you know, and you can say, uh, well, show me the stats, and, and all of the stats will just live, mm -hmm. you know, render in front of you. So it's not that you'd have to put this down to do that. You'd be able to check your email, you'd be able to check everything else, talk to people while you're in staying in that environment and seeing heads up displays of graphics that you wow. call in rather than so so what we're looking at right now is still of course the early stages of just figuring out what to do uh, as this develops and this and what I'm talking about is maybe a year away. You maybe don't less. see and take it from somebody uh, I've been doing this for 30 almost 40 years. Apple by the way, happy birthday celebrated its 40 years birthday yesterday of incorporation April 1st 1976 so that's about how long I've been doing computing <laughs> and so you d but you d what you don't see is these big transitions you only see them every once in a while the advent of the internet was uh, one right. of the personal computing of course was the first I feel like this is a big transition that there's a, there's going to be news user interfaces new experiences new content created all to take advantage of a, a basically a totally new medium I think we are at the very beginning of one of those massive transitions. And I think if you saw Jessica and Tommy and, and, and Alex and my reaction to the Oculus, I think you can see that it is actually starting to happen. Well, and I don't know if, it, if you've had the same experience with even something as simple as the Theta, is that you start taking pictures with this and, and uh, you start not wanting to take pictures any other way. You're like, I just, you know, this, I, I still take pictures with my iPhone and with my like, little DXO know, and stuff so like that. It's so fun, but isn't it? I, uh, I, I, um, I was in Germany a couple weeks ago and I, um, you know, I broke my toe. And of course, I I'm sitting in a hospital in Germany, going, "Can I take a picture?" And I'm taking these like <laughs> these like panoramas of the X-ray machine with me well, sitting laying there in the, same in, the thing. in the thing. It was awesome. I went up to the bridge, right? Yeah. And they said, "No video, no video on the bridge on this cruise ship." 
And I said, well, do you mind? This is a 360 camera. Can I take a picture? It's very unobtrusive. You're going, bloop, it doesn't look like you're taking. But every detail of the whole bridge, right. if they had known, they probably would have stopped me, right? When, when we do sight. Yeah. <laughs> but it's what? not obvious. It's so tiny and uh, when, we, when we do sight surveys, when we're looking at, like, places boop, we're about to do production, boop. we just walk around going like not this. Not a big you see deal. Going like this, and then, and then everyone can go back and look not at it. Not a big it's, deal. It's great. All right. Well, thank you, Alex, for this. Uh, this has been VR Day. This is very exciting. We're going to... Uh, Get a little tip from Chris Marquardt, and then final thoughts. I know it's been a long show, but I can't wait to stop because I want to get over there and start playing with my Oculus <laughs> Rift. Uh, very exciting. Our show today brought to you by Squarespace. I tell you what, I don't think it's very long before we start putting uh, our own blog posts up. Uh, I can do that now with YouTube on Squarespace in 360 degrees. People can interact with it. A great website is the place for you to have your place on the internet, the place you call home. Sure, you got Twitter, sure, you got Facebook and Instagram, but if you don't have your very own website, you're missing the boat. You, trust me, I've been through this. You gotta have a place where you put everything. Squarespace is where I put my stuff. If you're a business and you're not online, you're barely a business. That's not like not having calling cards, it's like ha not having a phone number. Squarespace.com. If you want to see my site, leoville.com, I have been loving it. Now, my design is very simple, but you can go as crazy as you want because you're starting with those incredible templates that Squarespace provides. The templates mean you just drag and drop, point and click, and make that site your own. The best designers, but also the best engineering, so they're all mobile responsive. That means they look good no matter what size the site is. Uh, and by, scroll down a little bit, Brian, because you'll see I have the Squarespace has a, uh, an embed for a SoundCloud, so I'm able to embed SoundCloud audio files in there with just a click of the mouse. Uh, if you scroll down a little bit more, you'll see on the right my Instagram feed just pops up into Squarespace automatically. A calendar of events, everything you want. And it's, this took me about two hours to set up. It didn't take any time. Most of that time was putting content in there. Squarespace is also the best hosting. I want you all to go to leoville.com right now, all of you and you still won't be able to bring it down. The best hosting, the best software, very affordable, and e-commerce is built into every site. So if you want to, this is where my, I think this is a great place now for my photos. I, you, sure, put them on Flickr, put them on Instagram, but you also deserve a place that's your portfolio. And if you're a photographer, the Squarespace portfolio app on the iPad, pull those pictures in, lets you show them to clients. It, I could go on and on. I want you to try it. Templates, uh, by the way, they've just added five new magazine-style templates you got to check out with grid-style landing. I'm going to actually move my site to a, a one of these, I think. Grid-style landing pages. I love that look where you see all the posts on a grid, kind of like The Verge. Infinite scroll, so you just keep going down. Related posts, author profiles, integrated search field and header. You want to publish a magazine? You got it. Squarespace.com. And by the way, Elisa's setting up her business, her new business site on Squarespace, and she said, we ought to talk about this. There are literally hundreds of Squarespace designers and developers and setup experts. She said, I can't do this myself. I want to, I just, too much time. I want somebody to help me with the content, help me with the design. She found somebody right away. They're doing a great job, and it's really affordable. Squarespace.com. You could try it for free right now, but use the offer code NSS for 10% off when you decide to buy. And that makes it a really good deal. Squarespace.com. The offer code is NSS. Our favorite photographer, well, one of ours. I have many favorite photographers, including Alex Lindsay. Well, one of our favorite photographers, Chris Marquardt, he wants to show you how to shoot more with less stress. And then we'll wrap this up with our mailbag. Chris? Hello and welcome. This is Chris Mark. We're bringing you yet another photo tip. Find out more about me at discoverthetopfloor.com. Now, you know, people are often worried about getting a scratch on the front of their lens or some dust inside the lens. Don't. Here is a blog article by lensrentals.com. They rented out a lens and got it back from the customer. And what they do is they take test shots. So this is one of the test shots. This is another test shot. And here is the lens that this has been taken with. Just imagine what a tiny little scratch will do on your lens. It won't do much. Now, the same goes for things like dust inside the lens. This is the inside of a lens and they got back from a client. It has a bug inside or a fly. And of course, they took a while to get this out. But the big thing that we learn from there is it doesn't really make a difference. They took test shots with the lens, with the fly inside, and it didn't make any difference. So don't we worry about a bit of 
dust in your lens or a slight scratch on the front element, it will not change the quality of your pictures. That was it. It's amazing, you know, a fly in the lens and you don't see it in the image? That's crazy. Chris has always said he doesn't wear, he doesn't use those uh, clear little screw-on filters that a lot of people put on to prevent lens scratching. He says, why do that? You scratch the lens, no big deal, you'll never see it. I don't know if I'm completely right. <laughs> Okay, on my new Leica, a, I put a little... That's a lot of... I put a little thing on it. All right, here we go. It's mailbag time. Alex Lindsay's here from the Pixel Core, and here's your very own Gear VR. I mean, uh, cardboard. Cardboard VR. Look I don't at know that. why anyone's spending money on a... <laughs> Those are actually pretty good. But you need to no, put like a them. phone in there before it actually does anything. I just see cardboard. <laughs> Isn't it really... Did you see Google's... Uh, of April Fools with the uh, Google Gla Google cardboard plastic? Yes. No. You haven't seen that? It's very funny. They said it they do it as uh, every product launch video, you know, starts with a, there's nothing quite as real as real life. Now with Google cardboard plastic, you can see real life as it really is and it's just a piece of plastic you put over your head and you're looking around <laughs> and they show the view sound from all around it's really skip ahead a little bit because this is like the uh, the progression look how it's fully immersive <laughs> lightweight <laughs> Now that's virtual that's reality. Was that this year? It was yesterday. Yesterday. April awesome. Fools. Works with all apps. <laughs> of course it does. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> Analog clock. <laughs> He's looking at his wristwatch. 360 degree audio. What's realer than real. Probably nothing. Nothing's realer. Or maybe something than real. <laughs> I doubt it, though. I think we. I think we... <laughs> <laughs> That's that was a good April Fool's joke. Here, it's from the mailbag. I didn't even look at these ahead of time. Um, oh, this is a good one. This is for Leo, Alex, or anyone else. My son was in a middle school play, The Little Mermaid. Nice. The best video I have came from my sister's iPhone in three separate pieces. I edited them together in iMovie on my Mac, but. She, speaking of flies, she must have a, had a lint or a, something on her lens. And there's a black fuzzy defect on the video, which looks like a bee in the show flying around my son's head. I know how to edit and correct photos with tools like Photoshop. Is there a tool to easily edit defects out of videos without having to go frame by frame over thousands of frames? I know there must be because Scarlett Johansson is really ugly, actually. <laughs> but they have this tool. No. Uh, but they do do that with movie stars. They actually can, f can like, frame after frame Photoshop, right? Can you do well, that with yeah. your home video? So there's a couple things. Uh, yeah, you can. Um, most of the tools that are, um, um, that are uh, available for the movie stars are really expensive or proprietary. The, They'll, like, the do ones... want the face once and then it tracks the face it and it continues to yeah. apply that. And so there's a couple things that people use to do corrections. So there's Mocha, which is a, does a live tracking. Um, of course, that's oftentimes used in conjunction or otherwise use a nuke, uh, silhouette effects, but all of these are professional like tools. Like thousands, right? Hundreds or thousands of dollars. I mean, you know, I, I think that they all start, you know, in the three to $500 range and okay. go up. Uh, for, for things that happen in a couple of seconds here and there and you have to pull it out, that's a pretty straightforward thing. Um, there's there's Mocha Pro, Pro for about 500 bucks. bucks. Right. Um, and so, uh, so these are, and these, these do a lot of, but this is what is being used oftentimes in, um, you know, do this. Now, this is to oftentimes to cut objects out. I'm kind of the amazed background. it's only 500 bucks. And it'll run it used to not be. Computer. It used to be thousands of yeah. dollars. You know, and, and so it's, um, so those are, um, those are the kind of tools that we use. But the problem that you're going to have is that what you're not trying to do is remove something you know, completely, like out of the background. You're trying to hand handle something that I'm assuming is going to be a little out of focus, hmm. which makes it harder. Yeah. And it's mo it sounds like it's moving erratically, <laughs> you know. Sounds, and so sounds hopeless. So I think that um, it could be a lot of work because what you really have to do there is you have to be able to track that little movement. Yeah. And then what you're going to need to do is do a basically a color call on it because obviously it's not gone. It's just a little darker. So it's I'm assuming like you, you it may not be actually occluding the background. So the way you would do that is you would either do a color call that would pull that back up, but you'd, you know, there's a lot of work to be done with there, or if it's not in front of someone, what you would do, or even if it is, you'd end up painting it out by basically copying images, Im information from another frame to it, 
which can be tracked and, 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 and so on and so forth. But it's not it's not a trivial solution. So it's, live with the little fly buzzing around his head. Depends on how like important it. it is. I mean, you know, yeah. maybe the, the, what I would do is if you want to fix it, um, you know, download the demo of some of these of these applications. Oh, maybe you uh, can do that. You know, play yeah. with it. Well, just to, or to play with it and just see if yeah. it works. You know, if it's really going to be worth it. And also, think about whether you're going to use the whole video or what part of the video you might actually use. Because a lot of times, you want to in film. When we were working on on films, uh, we think in in frames. We don't think in like hours or minutes. Right. We're like, how many frames do you need? I worked on I worked on one shot that was uh, it took me nine weeks to work on do one shot. And people would ask, like, why is it taking you so long? I'm like, wow, it's 236 frames. Oh. And they were like, 200. It was like, it was, it was like from Brain Farm, like, 200 heavy horse. You know, you know, you know, like, you know, it's, it's, but it's, it's really like, only 10 seconds. Oh, yeah, it's 10 <laughs> seconds long. But it was like a 10 second shot for a visual effects artist is like forever. So you want to think about, like, am I really going to use, you know, an hour of it or am I going to use right. it? Are, is there three minutes that were great? And then, and then try to figure out how to fix that. Fix the smallest amount. The part can, that you need to. You yeah. can. Because yeah. you're not really going to watch that. And really, it's kind of the photographer's rule too. Try to get it right going in. Because it's a lot easier to shoot it right than it is to fix it after you shoot it. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, there are there are reasons to, to when they say fix it in post, but those are said by people who have funding. <laughs> you know, you know, you or know. And so, who don't have to fix it in post. Oh, you're there. Well, yeah, but there's some better than funding some, minions. Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So, so it, it, yeah, definitely. Um, if you can't afford to, uh, you know, the, the best thing to always do is. Yeah, aim, uh, measure twice, cut once. Cut once, yeah. exactly. Go ahead, read yours. All right, all right, here we go. Uh, hello, I have two desktop wind boxes, okay. both running 8.1. I also have two screens. I want to be able to use both the screens on both the computers independently. So using computer A with screens 1 and 2, then later using computer B with screens 1 and 2. I bought a few Y cables and tried to hook them up. However, I could not get good results. I then purchased a two-port VGA switch, but it only seems to work uh, when I switch sources after a reboot. Uh, I know there is a logical and simple solution, but I yeah. cannot wrap my dilettante head around it, Paul. So you want a KVM switch? For both of them. Yeah. Well, one, you one switch, so you got two monitors, two computers, ke a keyboard, and a mouse. And you treat the two monitors as if one computer has two monitors, right? Right. But uh, do you need two KVM switches for dual monitors? Maybe you do. I think you That's do. an interesting question. But I've never just seen hit, a dual you, monitor but you KVM just hit, switch. You could just hit two buttons. If you had two little KVMs, yeah. you could just hit two buttons like that, right. and you would just swap them. It swaps them. It, it handles, it's doing basically what you did, Paul, but it does it in sync so that you don't have to, you know, reboot and all of that stuff. And it works very well. Uh, I.O. Gear makes excellent yep, we, we KVM switches. KVM We've used switches. those for many years. And it'll do your mouse as well. So if you want right. to switch your mouse and keyboard, it'll do that. You press the, the button time. now, you're using this computer with those two. The two monitors is the only tricky part. Yep. Uh, we, we, you know, what if you could do, if you wanted to, which is really cool, is, you, is, is, is one monitor is one computer, the other monitor is the other computer, and then you could have one keyboard and mouse and use something like Synergy and move your mouse across. That's kind of cool if you've never seen that done. Synergy is in a, a really neat program we've used for years. We, we started using it on the screensavers. It's still out. In fact, I think what happened, they went commercial, and then there's still a, you can build your own from the open source project that's out there. But S-Y-N-E-R-G-Y. -E and that'll work if you only care about one screen for each one. If you're trying to do dual monitor that's for both tricky computers, one. I think that might be the issue. Two, I, I wonder, does anybody KVMs. make a KVM with dual monitors? So many people now use two monitors or more. You'd think that they would. I don't, I don't know. I've never seen one. We've never tried to do that. You know, uh, Steve Gibson just built his own not ultimate virtual reality gaming machine, but his own ultimate PC. He says it's my last PC. <laughs> I want to build a PC that's so good that it'll last 10, 20 years, and I'll never have to build another one. Good luck. But <laughs> Good luck. But one of the things he did do is set it up so that he can have not one, not two, but eight simultaneous screens. He Ooh. bought dual quadro, quadro cards, each with four outputs for eight screens. Sounds like he's day trading or something. That's crazy. Well, I mean, uh, well, the, uh, w when you need What's that. What's the most you've ever had? Uh, I don't think we've ever. Well, we've we've worked with systems that had 12, 12 screens, and so. <laughs> but 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 the reason that they did that is because we would take if you if you go to it's some like of these huge room. conventions yeah. and, and you go into the keynote. Yeah. Um, now Apple is pretty basic. They're sixteen by nine little. You know. They don't do they a lot. They put them in a Windows but, on the screen. But a lot of them will have wraparound screens that are right. that are nine by sixty-four. Wow. You know, and, and what you do is they, they actually blend those screens to get blend projectors. Ah. And the software they will overlap. actually um, so the, the software is called Spider or Ventus uh, that will blend those 
those projectors together perfectly. Oh, neat. And they actually, and, and what's crazy is every projector has two projectors just in case one fails, wow. and also so it's really bright. And so then, so then you end up with, and I, I worked on one that was actually 26 monitors all the way, 26 pro, uh, projectors, 13 pairs all the way around. Wow. And then they, they can literally animate all the way across those, and, you know, and, and um, it's a... Uh, it's pretty cool. That's all I gotta say. I mean, it's, it's, Alex so it's, is awesome. He's the production so. guru, and I love living vicariously through you. You give us such great information every uh, week on Mac Break Weekly, and I love having you on the new screensavers. It's great to be here. Pixel Core is uh, just going great, guns. It's busy. It's nice to see. We are. Yeah. yeah. Follow Alex. He's on Twitter, and whenever he does something interesting, he tweets about it. L i n d s a y. Alex a l a l e x l i n d s a y. Thank you for uh, joining me. Pleasure to be here. It was a good day to have you on our uh, Gear VR Day. Thanks to our great studio audience. Uh, if you want to be in the audience, can't always promise it'll be something as exciting as the Oculus Rift, but you can always email tickets at twit.tv. We'll put out a chair for you. If you can watch live, we love it, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern Time, 2200 UTC. That's when we go live every Saturday afternoon. But on-demand audio and video are always available after the fact. twit.tv slash NSS. And, uh, of course, you can subscribe. There's Twit apps everywhere. There's podcasters apps everywhere. You definitely aren't going to want to miss one month from now. We're going to do our one-year anniversary. That's the first week in May, episode 52. It will also be, just coincidentally, the 18th anniversary of the launch of the original screensavers. Convenient. May 11th, 1998. Tech TV went on the air. It was ZDTV back then. And so we thought we'd kind of celebrate both our one-year anniversary and the 18th anniversary with Kate Patello. She'll be our guest host. Yeah, I'm very excited. Erin Newcomb is on next week. So if you want to talk about Arduino, I know it was Arduino Day today. We didn't do any Arduino stuff. We'll do that next week. Raspberry Pi Maker Products Projects. Uh, he's, of course, runs the Benicia Maker Space and is a, a great friend of the uh, network. So Erin Newcomb next week on the new screen series. Thanks for being here. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Woo! Woohoo!